The world is filled with all kinds of strange beings like this little guy. But this video is not about him. Hello friends. Once a week I'm in charge of sharing some science with the area homeschool group. And today I was going to introduce them to a very special being. And I thought, well, I should introduce you as well, because this is probably a creature that lives around you, but you may not have noticed in your world before. And it's a very fascinating being who is often literally right underfoot. Now, you can see my neighbor's laundry line here, and we're in an area of a yard that is often stepped on and trampled because it's a laundry area, and that used to be part of a, a CSA or a farm. So the soil around here is a little compromised, and that may be why this creature is present. Let's take a look. Do you see it? Uh, you might just be seeing grass at first, but look more carefully. What is this? We get down closer and we see there's this green, slimy stuff all over the ground. If you ascribe to a scientific view of the world, this creature is ancient. A very, very old being that was around, well, long before there were plants and animals the way we know them today. This is called Nostoc commune, and it is a cyanobacteria. The cyanobacteria is popularly called blue-green algae a lot, and you might notice that as a supplement that some people take. Believe it or not, this is used as a food source. It's often added to stir fries or soups, especially in Asian cultures. But the real magic of this bacteria, remember this is not a plant and it's not a fungus. This is a bacteria. And the real magic of it is that it is sitting underneath here on this compromised soil and it's enriching that soil with nitrogen. At the same time that it does that, enriching the soil to allow plants to have a better place to grow. It's also releasing a lot of oxygen into the air. And if we look back, scientists believe that this was one of the key players in creating oxygen in our atmosphere, which set the groundwork for plants and animals to have an atmosphere that would work for them. This is thought to have started about two billion years ago. And what these guys were doing was photosynthesizing. You might think, oh, that's weird because plants are the creatures that photosynthesize, not bacteria, right? Well, this is an example of the cooperative power of nature because inside of those plants are chloroplasts. Remember those from your biology class? The chloroplasts are the things that engage in photosynthesis and give the plants life, the ability to take sunlight and convert it into food. But do you know what those chloroplasts are? <laughs> Maybe you guessed it. They are symbiotic cyanobacteria. The same kind of creature that we're seeing here on the ground is what allows plants to live and grow and cover our planet in green. We can think of the species itself as being ancient, but in a less ancient, but still kind of ancient -y way, this stuff is very long lived what it does is it lives when it's wet in this hydrated state. So if we could look up close, we would see basically golden, well, greenish golden pearls in strings surrounded by polysaccharides, which are kind of like a type of sugar. And when this gets wet, this thing swells up into these globs that we're seeing. But if there's no water, then it's going to shrink down and become this dehydrated mass. And this dehydrated mass can live for tens of years 
in that dehydrated state. And when it is hydrated again, it just comes back into full blossoming life. We're not really sure how long these individual organisms can live if they're going back and forth from a hydrated to a dehydrated state. So this colony that's right underneath me could be very, very, very old, maybe 20, 30, 40, 60, 100 years or more. This being is also a reminder of, well, just like us and a lot of other creatures, instead of thinking of it as a, a single being, it is a, a colony or collection of beings. So the cyanobacteria is a single-celled organism that can live on its own. But here it's collecting in those strings that I spoke about, in these masses, and becoming something larger than itself. So I could think of it as a single organism. I could also think of it as a colony of organisms. You and I are the same. We are filled with all kinds of bacteria and other creatures that allow us to continue living from moment to moment. If we got rid of all of those bacteria and other beings that are inside of us, we wouldn't last very long. So in reality, we can think of ourselves sometimes, perhaps not as a Kenton or you, but rather that we are these thriving colonies. We are colonial organisms that look like a Kenton or you on the outside, but are really a whole thriving ecosystem. And when we think like that, we start to live a little bit differently in the world. Instead of thinking of ourselves as just me, this isolated bag of flesh that walks around, I become a, an interconnected part of this whole web of life. We now know that, for instance, an entire forest is like that, a network of plants and animals and fungi that all are woven together for the health of the entire forest. Lichens that you see on the side of trees are the merging of two very different beings that come together to create another entity, another being that's really a collection, a connection. Sometimes thinking like this can get us out of our selfish sort of mind and help us to realize and feel viscerally that we are part of a larger whole. We can still act as individual entities, but recognizing our connection to everything and everyone else definitely creates a whole different way of experiencing the world and of interacting with the world. So in this way, this little creature down here, this Nostoc commune, can be a reminder of a different way to live, of a different way of seeing life that is, is more based, in fact, in reality, and gets us out of a lot of the self-centered ways that we often can approach life when I just think of myself as an isolated me. Thanks, Nostoc commune. You're a great little critter. Share your thoughts, my friends. So much love to you all. Have you seen this before? Have you eaten it before? If so, how do you prepare it? If you've never seen it, go out and take a look. You're gonna look on compromised ground, areas where there's gravel or dirt that's kind of sandy and definitely other plants are trying to come in you may just find this, especially after rains, when it's hydrated and easier to see, coating the ground with its green mass and doing all kinds of good. Love to you all.